Thanks, Sia. What are the top tech stocks that I would buy right now if I was starting over? Let me share you my sort of old investment banker insight of exactly how I select those. I'm not going to just tell you the stocks. I'm actually going to walk you through the data points. I'm going to give you the data and the research so you can review this yourself. There's no financial advice, just an old investment banker talking out of one ear. Let's get cracking. Before we do, I want to encourage you to do one thing for yourself. You need to become really great at managing your money. Look at what we did last year. We did 105% last year return on capital employed. We did 126% re returns the year before. And this year, I'm, I'm tracking it a little bit more nicely. And you might say $3,600 is a lot. Maybe it's not a lot to you. We're trading here with about $30,000. So we're doing about 12% up so far this year. And I do this following my very simple three-step system, which in my opinion, anybody can implement. And it takes me probably two hours a week. So that's what it is. And it's a very, very systemized, formulaic, automated approach that I like. It takes very, very little time. You want to come and learn that? Well, do one thing for yourself. Head over to Felix Friends. Dot org, dot org slash webinar. And I'm running a free live trading training. So you can get your pulse on this for free. The entire setup, the entire system. I'll put the link down below as well if you can't read my handwriting, which would be reasonable. And um, I will also, if you watch this video to the end, give you all this data for every Nasdaq stock out there, all 100 of them, I'll give you a massive monster free benchmark. So stick around till the end. I'll give you, I'll give you the link and tell you where you can find it. Company numero uno is Alphabet, Google. They um, want to own the Alphabet. What do they do? Well, they own search, right? They do own search. And some people are saying it's all over. They're done. No more Google. Everyone will bing from now on. And let's look at what that really means and if that's really likely and if this is therefore possibly the opportunity. So cash flow is glorious. It's growing really nicely. Price momentum C, that's actually a good thing. That means the stock isn't super expensive. It hasn't gone up like a rocket ship like Nvidia. It's just sort of lingered. Profit health is an A. It's like the student you hate at school, but he's really, really smart. That's what Google is. And relative value at D, well, it's actually pretty good because there's also E and there is F which would be, this is freaking expensive. So it's actually looking pretty interesting. Why is it looking interesting right now? Well, look at what Bill Ackman had to say, and he's not my favorite guy in the world, but he's saying, look, w this is our top holding, Google. And we concluded that they're either tied or ahead in terms of AI, and you're ba basically paying nothing for the AI premium. And the way I'd look at that is, one, the reason OpenAI got started is because Google got into the AI game, right? That's number one. Number two, who wins at AI? Whoever has the most data. You need to be able to process as many, many user interactions as possible to get the research in a sense that your algorithms can learn of. It's like Tesla, right? Tesla is going to have already has the best full service full, uh, you know, FSD, self-driving, because they've got the most cars on the road. And it's very much the same thing here. And Google has been a bit more cautious with the whole thing. And you can see why, you know, we've got a black Jefferson and all that kind of madness. This is why people are kind of hating on Google right now and why I'm hugely against the whole woke nonsense. It's such a load of bollocks. The fact that they have these problems right now means everybody hates the stock and it's actually an opportunity, right? So type into Google, for example, um, happy white woman with white man, and you will only see pictures of mixed race couples, which I have absolutely nothing against. I couldn't care less what color of your skin was. Mine is translucent, but it just, it, it just, it, it doesn't look good, right? It's, it's stupid. It's idiotic. And it's just, yeah, the whole thing is, is moronic. But then watch, and I'll put a little clip in here for you, Google's Gemini 1.5, which is their, a, their chat GPT, right? It's their, they've rebranded Google Bart into Gemini 1.5, and it's pretty good. I'll probably set the timestamps of this video using Gemini 1.5, so it's pretty good. Watch this. It'll actually 
watch an open AI Sora video and then it'll critique it. So it's getting that good that it can actually watch a video and it can tell you, well, this is a little inconsistent because AI clearly screwed something up here. Well, OpenAI did. So I don't think they're that far behind. I just think they have been less aggressive at marketing it because uh, Island Bill wasn't involved. Microsoft, uh, you know who I'm talking about. And, and so I think it's an opportunity. I'm not going to tell you what Google does. I think you probably know if you are alive. And look at this. They've got gross profit margins of 56%, which is a little disappointing, honestly. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think it should be over 60, but there we are. Return on invested capital, however, is extraordinary. 25%. So if they if they invest $1,000, they'll make $250 out of that every single freaking year. It's like, whoa, right? Try doing that with real estate. Long-term earnings growth. So profit's been growing at 16% a year. And my kind of rule of thumb is, Look at these two numbers and it'll tell you how much the stock price is going to go up by. That isn't financial advice. That is not massively scientific. But if you just think about it, profits growing and their return on their investments, it has some metric on what the stock price does. So I would expect the stock price to do reasonably well in the longer term. I'm not going to run you through all the balance sheets here because I don't want to scare you off. But just to give you an, an overview here, they bring in 300 billion a year. 300 billion. Out of that, 73 billion is profit, right? But even more excitingly, almost 70 billion a year is free cash flow. These guys have got so much freaking money, they don't know what to do with it. They are going to not either catch up or exceed, or certainly will be up there with OpenAI and, and, and you know, Sam and Elon's lemmings. So, I think people are writing this company off too quickly. And, and I quite like that. I think that's an opportunity. That's why I put it in here. If you look at their earnings, look at the last year here, earnings beating market expectations every single freaking time. So don't write off Google would be my advice. And is it expensive? 20 times forward PE. Look at a lot of tech stocks. You're paying like 50, 60, 70 times PE. 20 times PE for an established business that's growing pretty good. That's the way I would look at it. I just think it's it's pretty decent. You hold this just five years and that PE becomes nine. Why? Because the P, think, think this through, the P is price now, right? You, you Assuming you're, you're buying Google today, which I'm not telling you to do, but assuming you were, that would be fixed. And then the E is future earnings and they are going to keep going up. And therefore, this PE multiple becomes more and more in your favor. So in 10 years, you will own this at like maybe two or three times profits, which means you're going to make like a 30% return on this investment. Like a year. My head's about to explode. That's how exciting that is. Stock number two, not exactly a secret one. We've got some smaller ones coming up here as well. NVIDIA, and you can't really go through a growth stock video right now without NVIDIA, and I'll tell you why. Cash flow is insane. It's growing insanely. It's insanely going up in terms of share price. That's bad, but profits are glorious. And you know what? It isn't actually massively expensive because they've grown so much and they're likely to keep doing that for the next four quarters and possibly beyond. And of course, they make GPUs. I hope they're going to get into software. That's where I see them going. So right now it's GPUs hardware, and that is a one-time purchase. Okay. Now, of course, it is true that Zuckerberg is buying, I don't know, 30,000 GPUs or something, but it's still kind of a one-time purchase. You buy a one-time income stops. The future is software subscriptions, which is the Netflix model, the Adobe model, the Microsoft model, where not only will you buy the GPU, but in order to use the GPU for the greatest software, you're going to send them, I don't know, $25 a month or something like that. And that's recurring until death do us part. And therefore, that's going to shift their valuation up even further. It's almost 100% pure and adulterated profit. And that's therefore, I think, the way they're going to go. They're already working on it. They have a lot of software out already. To record this, what am I using? NVIDIA Broadcast. It's a completely free software. It's pretty cool. It sort of fixes your video a little bit. It certainly handles the audio, which was like the boon of my life. I used to have a 
an audio guy on speed dial all the time and and now i no longer need to we are also playing around with new lighting by the way which is still a little it's a little blue isn't it a little blue it's a little weird i don't know let me know what you make of the lighting in the comments down below we're trying to make this look prettier for you and hard to make this look prettier so we got to bring in the big guns gross profit margins are glorious it's a hardware company i mean they're manufacturing stuff well, sort of manufacturing stuff. They have people manufacture it for them largely, but you get the idea. Revenue, 60 billion. Half of that is profit. It's like, how much are they overcharging us by for these GPUs? A lot. And return on invested capital is 64%. That's like, oh my God, I've never really seen a number like that. Very, very rare at this scale to see a number like that. They invest $1,000, they get $643 back the next year. <laughs> you think they should invest more money? Yup. And then uh, profits have been go going up at 31%. So you take these two numbers together and you sort of go figure that the stock price might go up in that range of 30 to 60% uh, in the coming year. Not financial advice. It's gone up a lot already. I get that. But at the moment, the numbers are justifying the madness that has gone out on on there and they also could generate 27 billion dollars in free cash flow they're never going to dilute you they can buy back as many shares as they like they're never going to go to the market and ask for bond money or convertible shares or any of the shenanigans of a lot of other tech stocks growth stocks out there so it's a yeah it's just a freaking insanely good business and look at the earnings here the last five quarters Big, beautiful beats every time. Repeat after me. Big, beautiful beats every time. And yeah, just it's well done and everything. Are they doing some shenanigans with pulling forward demand and financing some of their customers and all of that? Yeah. Yeah. Is that unusual? Is that illegal? No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's kind of what everybody does. I wish they weren't. I don't think they need to, but they are. So what are you going to do about it? Is it expensive? Well, it's 33 times earning. It's 50% more expensive than Google. Just throwing that out there. But if you were to hold this for 10 years and growth was going to be just sort of 19%, 60%, 0 11%, growth was really fizzling out, you would turn this 33x multiple into a 13x multiple, which becomes kind of reasonable. So it doesn't seem crazily priced, weirdly. Now, here's a really sexy stock. This is a really sexy stock. Who loves bookkeeping? You love bookkeeping? I love bookkeeping. I hate bookkeeping. Really, really hate it. I've got some receipts here on my desk. Like hotel receipts and stuff like that. I need to take pictures of them and submit them to, you know, you get the idea. And, and, and I hate doing it. Even that I hate doing. And I've got the loveliest bookkeeper in the world. She's amazing, but nevertheless, still hate doing it. Enough about bookkeeping. Well, Intuit is sort of a bookkeeping company, kind of. Look at this. Cash flow. Brilliant. Growing amazingly. It's a little expensive in terms of recent movement. Profit is glorious, but it's not that expensive in terms of relative value. There is E and F. A lot of companies with a profit health of A or B are in the E and F category. This one is not. And what do they do? They are the number one small medium enterprise bookkeeping software quickbooks you might have heard of the thing and uh, they also have credit karma and uh what's the other thing that they that they purchased uh, the, 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 what is it on here no the emailing mailchimp that's the one mailchimp as well that's also them so it's a pretty good system i use it myself for a bunch of businesses that i have i think we probably use it for three or four businesses and it's it's pretty good it's like this this standard and when in the past i've wanted to sell businesses you go to investors and they say show me your book quickbooks and you say oh i'm using something else and they go yeah you're gonna have to change that so it is just the standard and that's that's moat that's moat. You want to sell a business? You got to use QuickBooks. You're going to start using QuickBooks on the beginning and you're never, ever, ever, ever going to change it. So it's an amazing moat. Gross profit margin is almost 80%. That gets a gold star. 15 billion in revenue and 12% return on invested capital, 14% profit growth. So I would expect the company to grow somewhere in that 12 to 14% range. I mean, their stock price not financial advice, but you get the idea. And I think that could actually pick up a bit because it used to be a lot better. So I think they could do a, a little bit more there. They probably will. And free cash flow, almost 5 billion. So 4.7 billion out of, that's almost a 30% free 
cash flow margin, which means again, you're never going to get diluted. They're never going to issue shares. They don't do any of the stupid stuff that small, smaller companies have to do. It's just a good business. Why? Because it's subscriptions, right? We pay at the beginning of the month for a service that costs them almost zero to deliver. It's just a good business. And they're beating earnings per share, well, like 10 quarters in a row or something. That also means management is good because they know how to beat expectations. Is it cheap? No, nope. 40 times P, not cheap. But if you assume it's just going to keep growing at that sort of 10, 12%, you are going to get to like a 10x PE, which is reasonable. And if you don't understand that, it means you skipped one of the previous stocks because I just explained it. Very, very naughty. So go back and watch the whole video from the beginning and smash the like button while you're at it and then sit on the naughty step. Now, here's another one. You may not have heard of this one. I like to throw in occasionally something that, you know, keeps you on your toes. Cadence Design Systems. Sounds like something out of a Dallas episode, doesn't it? Cash flow, brilliant. Growth health, amazing. Price momentum, yeah, we like that to be a low number, a letter, because then it means it doesn't go up that much. But look at the profit health, an A, A star. But it isn't cheap. So what's the dealio here? Look at this. Cadence Design Systems and Intel expand partnership to enable best-in-class SOC design for Intel's advanced processes. And they do some really boring shit that is something to do with chip design that I barely understand. Uh, but they work with the Intel Foundry services, so they must be pretty good. And lots of other people, of course, as well. And the whole space. Everybody is basically racing to catch up, catch up with NVIDIA and therefore everyone's throwing whatever they've got at these kind of companies. And yeah, here they explain it. So they have provide software, hardware servers, and reusable integrated circuit design blocks worldwide. So it's really about designs. If you want to make chips, you go to these guys and they can verify, emulate and simulate and, and, and all that kind of stuff for chips right and if you don't understand any of that well i come and understand the numbers numbers are always simpler for me gross profit margin almost 90 percent cha-ching four billion revenue but a quarter of that is profit that's hopeful return on invested capital is 28 percent. that's glorious glorious and profit growth is 16 percent. it's also pretty good so take these two numbers together i'm looking at a share price increase of 16 to 28 percent a year not financial advice, but that's my, you know, rule of uh, pinky finger. <laughs> so let's look at free cash flow. Have they got any? Yes, they do. Oh my God, 1.2 billion out of 4 billion revenue. Again, they've got money. They've got money to spend. They don't need to borrow any and they don't need to dilute you. And is management any good? Yes, because for the last 10 quarters, they've beaten expectations on profits every single freaking quarter and really revenue too. I mean, $760,000 is kind of pedantic. And so they've beaten revenue expectations the last two and a half years as well. And is it cheap? No. 53 times PE. Why? AI, AI, repeat after me. It's just chip space at the moment is the space to be in because if you want your AI product to be great, you need a huge amount of computing power and therefore you need AI. Uh, I mean, you know, the latest chips. And, and, and to build the latest chips, you quite possibly need these guys. At least Intel seem to think so. And I think, again, Intel is one that's been kind of written off a little too early. I think they'll bounce back. They're probably lagging behind a little bit, but I think they'll bounce back. And with this growth, 16, 20, 23, 13%, even in five years, your PE halves. Give it an R five years and your PE is going to be at a reasonable level. So if you're a longer term holder, which is generally what I would look at in terms of growth investing. Now, here is one that's going to blow your socks off. And you're like, Felix, American Express is not a growth company. So you thought. Cash flow? Yeah, all right. It's growing. Stock's gone up a lot. We don't like that, but it's very profitable. Here's my friend, Yevgenis Kazanins, and I butchered that name, I'm sure, on, on X. And he says, or rather the CFO of Amex says, the biggest source of yield expansion, which is basically profit margin expansion, 
um, is the way we fund the balance sheet of Amex. If you go back in time, the main source of funding was commercial paper, asset-backed securities, and, and loans. That's changed a lot. When we became a bank, yes, they are a bank, uh, we introduced high-yield savings account. Yep, you can put your money into Amex and they'll put, pay you interest rate on that. That has a much lower funding cost for us, so that's for us the biggest source of funds right now. And can you see that? 55% of their funding are now your money, deposits. And that makes that's basically free money for them. Money they're actually making money out of because they can invest that money they can make a return on that and they'll pay you less than the return they make. So it's not just free money, free cash flow, but it's actually profitable thing for them. And I think you probably know what they do. The little plastic cards, their customers tend to be a little bit more wealthy. They have better credit scores. They spend more. They are much, much less likely to go delinquent on the card. There's a study out by Amex showing when people are in financial trouble, they're going to pay the Amex card off before the Visa and the MasterCard because they value that relationship and they feel like Amex is going to judge them. Seriously. And therefore they do that. So it's just got a little bit of a better image than, you know, your, uh, what have we got here? Uh, your MasterCard. And therefore people will do that. Gross profit margins at 55%. That's okay. I, I, I love a 60% how higher, but it's still pretty good. But return on invested capital at 10%, profit growth at 15%. It's just, it, to me, it's just one of those solid businesses. I would expect them to keep going up by 10, 15% a year, possibly a little bit more. And it just falls a little into the category of, if you look at Master and Visa's numbers, they're actually somewhat better, which is why I like Amex right now, because I think there is an opportunity to move this up, the margins up, and for them to become even more profitable and, and better run. And... They do have $17 billion in free cash flow a year. So they're not exactly like stuck for funds or going to dilute you anything like that. And it's been a little bit more choppy here. They've had some quarters that weren't brilliant, but you could also see that as an opportunity that they can improve, which is the way I'm kind of looking at it. And look at the valuation, 17 times. It's probably the cheapest stock we've got on here right now. And... It's it's just a reasonable valuation. That's the way I look at it. You know, not financial advice. Here's another one. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more sexy. They sell fluffy coins and that kind of thing. And and look at these numbers. Cash flow, yeah. Growth, yeah. Profit health, horrible. Relative value, yeah. And of course, it is Coinbase Global. And why do these numbers not matter? Or these letters, rather. Let me show you. Okay. You know what they do, right? They are the biggest crypto platform out there that is seems to be legitimate and not going to go bankrupt and not run by some dodgy teenager with very, very bad hair. Uh, the uh, the whole um, Sam Bank Friedman thing, you know, the entire business was run on QuickBooks. <laughs> so into it was what they used, which is kind of funny when you have $15 billion or something, whatever they had, or $50 billion and you're running it on QuickBooks. It's, it's kind of amusing. It's like a spreadsheet. Uh, so anyway, Humor uh, might be mine, not yours. Gross profit margins are amazing. They were at one point almost 100%. And why are the return on invested capital and the growth numbers so bad? So the business, unfortunately, is cyclical with the crypto waves. And crypto, if you hadn't noticed, it's gone through the crypto winter, where every crypto exchange was either shut down or some sort of Madoff Ponzi scheme or just run by drug-addicted youths who didn't know what the frick that they're doing, despite Harvard parents, and um, crypto collapsed. And people didn't trust it. SEC tried to shut it down. The big banks were saying crypto is, is over, it's just about money laundering and, and gun running and arms running, and which is amusing because all those guys use the US dollar and JP Morgan doesn't seem to mind accepting US dollars, but that's a story for another day. But if you hadn't noticed, we're back. Right. So crypto is back. Bitcoin is, as I'm recording this, at 60,000 plus, and people are getting excited about it again, interested in it again. We've got the Bitcoin ETFs, which means JP Morgan and the big banks now have their own ETFs. So they have accepted it because they can make money from you and they couldn't care less about what they said yesterday. They just want your money and make money out of it. And the government seems to have given up on, on just branding this as some sort of Ponzi scheme. So therefore... 
I think Coinbase has a glorious future ahead. I think it's the one platform that's going to be out there, that's going to be sort of legitimate and, and will survive. They do have a billion dollars in free cash flow almost. So again, they're not really in trouble. They just went through the crypto winter and therefore I quite like it. And look at the last four or last years of earnings, last four quarters, you can see them beating with pretty nice margins here. A pretty big surprises. So I think things are looking up over there. Is it expensive? Is it cheap? At the moment, it looks insane. 173 times PE. But that's because the earnings taken into account here are the last four quarters, which was the crypto winter. So the numbers are fairly meaningless. So I'll throw it in there for you. Now, I did promise you a goodies. Here are the goodies. The full NASDAQ benchmark, the whole shebang, and here it is. It's a whole spreadsheet, every NASDAQ 100 company, and you can filter by these. So for example, if you wanted to, let me zoom in a bit. If you wanted to only see the companies with a high gross profit margin, you click filter by condition, greater than, and then type in 60%. You need the percent, otherwise it doesn't work. And then it only shows you those. And then you could add to that, maybe I want certain levels of earnings growth or you know that kind of thing so you can play around with it and it'll give you some ideas and it'll also show you how few really good companies are really out there and of course last but not least make sure you join me on tuesday for the live trading training this is what the web page looks like to sign up for felixfrenz.org slash webinar and i will teach you my entire three-step system how i find the trades how i exit them how i automate it you get all of that knowledge uh, come and join me felixfrenz.org slash webinar and i thank you for watching if you enjoy the video you know what to do there are buttons to abuse and i've also put out a video for you which will delve you deeper into more amazing growth stocks which i'm going to ping up here and I'd encourage you to check that out thanks for watching